this, it's not a knife, it's just a piece of metal that's okay. hooked onto a handle. But if you look at it very closely and, and rotate a little bit, you'll see that it's two different kinds of metal. There's uh, literally almost like they're sandwiched, two little pieces oh, of metal yeah. that are glued together. So while you're looking at that, I'll fire up the uh, torch, because what's oh. a science segment without the torch? Exactly. All right. So now watch, this is a, a very, very cool metal. So okay. let me show you what it looks like when we put it and when we heat it up. When you heat up this metal here, the metal will actually curve. So you see oh, how it's that. starting yeah. to curve? Yeah. This is the same kind of metal that's in an old thermostat. So when the metal gets hot, oh. it bends in one direction. So if you can imagine this, not in these extreme temperatures, mm -hmm. but if something gets hot, all of a sudden it would come over here and touch a switch, for example, and turn on your thermostat so right. that your air conditioning would right. go. Right. And so now see how the metal is bent. So this was hot. What I want you to do is I want you to take this now and now put it in the cold water. So just dip it down. It in there? Yeah, just dip it down in the cold water. Oh, look at that. Notice that. And so when you come back, pull it back out again, it's perfectly straight wow. and you've got it. So that bi-metal kind of strip that's there, it has been used for a long time. When it gets hot, it bends in one direction. Yeah, yeah. We had liquid nitrogen and you know about that liquid <laughs> nitrogen, don't you? I think we have video of that. And, and then when it gets cold, it bends in the other direction. So oh, it's great. very, very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> but there's a different kind of metal that I wanted to show everybody and I actually uh, spread one out for you okay. here so that we can see. This is a, a little spring. It's called nitinol wire. It's nitinol a, wire? Nitinol. It's an alloy of nickel and titanium. And so let me okay. pull it out and I'm going to ruin it for you. So I just oh, okay. ruined that spring. Right. So there's a little spring there that just got ruined. It's and ruined. normally if you take a spring and you pull a spring out like this, mm -hmm. uh, there's absolutely no way to coil it back together. So if I asked you to kind of work on coiling it back together, you couldn't. You couldn't. But yeah. this is a very, very special metal that has a memory. So let me move this beaker out of the okay. way. And we have two beakers that you see that are down here that just right. have hot water from the hot faucet. Water. Okay. So what's going to happen is slowly you're just going to put that into the water and I want you to watch what happens. All so right. go ahead and put it in the water and watch what happens. There it goes, there it goes, there no it goes. Way. Pull it back out again and look at that isn't that Can just amazing that? so oh, you're back to wild. exactly the way it was isn't that amazing so you pull it out and you're set i've got this one set up over here and i'll show you what yeah, it looks look like this. when when it goes inside so we're we're there as soon as it goes in like this look it at starts that. to coil back up again so it literally is coiling back up again and oh, it retains its, uh, its shape. So you can imagine what the function could be for this. This could be pulled out a little bit, and when water got to be a certain temperature, right. like an anti-scalding faucet, right, right, right. automatically the, screen, uh, the spring would close down, close off the faucet so somebody wouldn't get hurt. Right. But you could actually even do it with electricity. So watch this. I'm going to stretch it so out like this. A little bit of electricity. This will work. So we uh, just have a 9-volt battery. So okay. here's, our, uh, here's our wire that gets hooked on here. They use this, for example, in uh, doctors will use it they'll take an artery and they'll put this metal down an artery and really? then the body temperature will cause that piece of metal to open up so a clogged artery it'll fix like that so you're looking at it now i'm just going to touch it to watch. the electricity and now watch what oh. happens <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, so it's that's just wild. the heat, and it comes back again. That's They're using wild. it for bones right now, mm -hmm. uh, so it hooks two bones together and keeps them. Just the heat of your, wow. your body will do that. Even the glasses that you buy, you bend the frame, right, right, right. and you put it in warm water, right. they'll pop back into their original shape, which makes it very cool. Well, we want to we want to get people on the onto website. the uh, the website because you said you put a bunch of stuff on there. In this video, we're going to describe alloys as a homogeneous mixture of metals or a mixture of a metal and non-metal. So if you try to visualize um, an alloy, basically it, it looks like you know any pure metal that we would find on the periodic table. And so really, it's hard for us to tell visually if something is a pure metal or an alloy. So let's take a look at what the difference is. First, let's give a definition of alloy. Well, it's a homogeneous mixture of metals or a mixture of a metal and non-metal. So you can actually take that right from the outcome. And the word homogeneous means it appears to be one substance. So when we take a look at um, an alloy, it looks like it's, it's all made of exactly the same thing throughout. And so if we were to take a look at any part of that metal, the composition would be the same. So if we took a sample from here, it would be the same composition or made up of the same stuff as if we took the sample from here. So that's what it means to be homogeneous. So what is it? So what's the difference between a pure metal and an alloy. Well, an alloy, if you take a look down at the atomic level, is going to be made up of different types of atoms. So here you can see that represented as red and black. So here's a substitution alloy in which um, atoms of relatively similar size um, sort of substitute each other. And for example, brass, um, if this was to be represented, the red could be, for example, or sorry, the black could be, for example, copper. 
and then the red could be for example zinc and so that would be then a substitution alloy and the reason I chose that is because copper is more abundant than zinc and brass um, for pop can you would be aluminum and uh, manganese for aircraft construction aluminum and copper so that's a substitution alloy if we looked at a pure metal um, it would either all be black or it would all be red that would be a pure metal no mixture over here is another alloy it's interstitial and interstitial even if some of you are um, studying biology there's that context of interstitial is in between um, so for example steel is an interstitial alloy because the carbon atoms are much smaller than the iron atoms so the iron ones are the black ones here and the carbons are small enough to actually fit in between um, the iron atoms so that makes it interstitial over here substitution they have to be larger and so if they're of similar size and they have to substitute each other they can't fit in between